welcome to another fresh episode of Blooming in Brisbane. And on tonight's episode of Blooming in Brisbane, we're joined by Claire Bickle, Noel Burdett, Gillian Coombe. But first, let's go to Mick. Hi, I'm Mick from Grangeview Gardens, and today we're looking at uh, big bromeliads and small bromeliads, but we're looking at skirting and how to keep your plants nice and clean. So over time, a lot of your bromeliads will start to get dead leaf buildup around the bases. Now it's just a simple matter with some of these, you'll be able to pull them straight off. And we can start to clean the plant up. Now, if you wish to at this stage, there are a whole lot of pruning tools, particularly a little saw like this on bigger plants, that you can, you can actually prune off some of these other leaves. And we can start to make the plant look presentable. Now one of the things that you will find when plants have been allowed to skirt like this for quite a while, whilst bromeliads take water in from the top, um, in pots particularly the soil needs to be kept moist as well. Now with modern day potting mixes when they dry out, they can uh, stop water penetration from a lot. So when you clean a plant up like this, when you've got it completely cleaned up, it's probably a good idea to give it a good drink and let it soak through and maybe give it another one so it's ready for the next time. So it's just a matter of how far up you want to come. So a lot of the leaves get damaged on that. So it's just a quick matter of cutting them off and you can spin the plant around or walk around the plant depending on where you're doing it from and just clean it all up. And suddenly we start to present the plant. So if you're in a formal pot by the pool or by the door you can do this on a regular basis and just keep the plant nice and clean. So the mix in this has been here for quite a while, it's very dry. So when we're, when we're finished here, we'll get it off the bench and we'll give it a good drink. Um, I don't tend to fertilise these plants, but if you, if you want to, you can fertilise at this stage while it's nice and clean. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a really, really big plant like this silver plum, or if it's a small bromeliad, the system's the same. Um, keep it clean, and when we come back into the watering, you can just put water in and put water on top, and then you can leave the plant again. This week's plant of the week is a really big family, they're called euphorbias. And of course the euphorbias stretch from small little ground covers to very, very large trees as well and everything in between. But the ones that I want to sort of focus on today are these forms here that are, are now becoming very, very popular in all garden centres and home gardens. And these are the Euphorbia milii group. A lot of these have been hybridised over in Asia and of course there's now a myriad, a beautiful rainbow of colours that people can get. The only colour that doesn't appear in Euphorbias are purples and blues, but of course you can get oranges and apricots, beautiful pinks like you see here, deep scarlet reds, whites and even lime green. They are just a beautiful plant to have. If you're looking for a great potted plant that doesn't take a lot of care but gives a lot of impact for most of the year, you can't go past some of these euphorbias. So that's Euphorbia milii. You should find them now at your local garden centres. They're easy to grow in any good quality potting mix. Make sure it's well drained and make sure you keep the pot in the sun so they don't like the shade too much so sunlight is the key. Look for them now, Euphorbia milii, you'll never be without one. Glad to see you back and thanks Noel, that was great. Now just a minute of your time. Pesticides, what are they? Pesticides can mean fungicides, insecticides, it just means it's killing a pest because the word sides is Latin for kill or to kill. So, therefore, pesticides could be a fungicide or an insecticide, and you've got to know what you're trying to kill so you get the right agent to kill it with. Now, just remember, always check on the labels. They tell you exactly what they'll kill. And so, always check through. If not, ask a nursery person for advice. Your local retail garden centre is always willing and happy to help you 
and to make sure you do the right thing. And remember, read the labels and follow them. More is not better. Thanks for that. <laughs>